Hello class, welcome to school. Today is Thursday, May 7th, let's begin. So today we are doing What Is This Feeling from Wicked, which I know I love all musicals, but Wicked is my favorite musical of all time. It is based on the Wicked Witch's perspective of what happened in The Wizard of Oz. Um, and this song might make you relate to some of the things you might be feeling with your siblings at home. So it's a really good musical for us to do today. So the first time you listen through, I want you to look for good, for any, um, I'm sorry, any examples of words that you don't know. Remember, this is our skip it and move on strategy. We recognize those words we don't know, but we don't let them bother us. The second time through, I want you to highlight or underline or circle or whatever in a different color looking for good examples of word choice. If you don't have your ultimate language book at home, my expectation is that you're writing a list of words from listening to the song, I'll try to pick one with lyrics in it um, of what um, of words that you don't know and then good examples of word choice. The third time you uh, listen to this, I want you to draw a picture or use text messages to show what is happening in this particular musical. Number one, this song is most accurately about A, a pair of sisters who cannot get along, B, the experience of going off to college, C, the symptoms of one experiences when dealing with a difficult and frustrating situation, D, two roommates at school who are having trouble and really dislike each other. So a lot of you might think that it's A, a pair of sisters who cannot get along because the things that they're saying to each other seem like a sister fight. But it's actually D, two roommates at school who are having trouble and really dislike each other. And the reason I know this is I can go back to the text and it says, it starts with the phrase, my dearest momsy and popsicle, the one is saying, so she's talking to one set of parents and the other one is saying, my dear father. So we know that they're talking to two different sets of parents, which usually means that they're not sisters. Then they talk about there's been some confusion over rooming here at Shiz. And so that's kind of the extra piece of text evidence that we need to say. These two are roommates. Um, and they say, you see, my roommate is. They literally use that word roommate. And so that's how I know that the answer to this one is D. Number two, read the following phrase from the song, loathing, unadulterated loathing, for your face, your voice, your clothing. Let's just say, I loathe it all. Which of the following words would provide the most accurate substitute for the word unadulterated in this context? So you might be wondering what the word loathing is. Loathing is a fabulous word that you should use in every argument ever if you have the occasion because um, it just shows that you're really smart and gets people off their feet. But loathing is a synonym for hate. So if, for example, you say to your friend, I loathe that word you just used, that will really catch them off their guard and it will get your message across that you do not like the situation. But loathing means hate. So unadulterated loathing. Let's use our plug and chug method to see which of these words will fit the best. So absolute loathing, hatred loathing, evil loathing, or minor loathing. So the only two that really work as a word in our plug and chug method is A, absolute, and D, minor. And if we look at this song, they don't seem to have a minor hatred for each other. They seem to really loathe each other. They want to get that across. They say loathing a lot of times. So this is A, absolute loathing. Um, number three, look at the following analogy. Loathing is to detestation as peculiar is to what? And I'm actually going to write this out on my whiteboard. So if you look at my whiteboard, I have here, loathing is to detestation as peculiar is to what? So notice that I still need to ask myself, and I like to draw arrows, how are loathing and detestation related, right? It's kind of like when we do fractions, right? We're trying to see what we need to multiply our numerators by to get to our denominators. Same thing here. So loathing and detestation, how are they alike? We've already established that loathing is hatred. And if we look at this song, total detestation, they say this in conjunction with loathing. So it's not like they're going to go from loathing to loving each other. We know that loathing and detestation are synonyms. They mean the same thing. They both mean hate. Peculiar, and we've talked about this a lot with uh, wonder, peculiar kind of means strange or different. So if these two words are the same, I need to keep these two words the same. If these two words are opposites, I need to do the same thing down here. So it's kind of like our whatever we do to the numerator, numerator must also do to the denominator, denominator, except this time it's with words. So what would be the same as peculiar? Normal, eh, exhilaration, eh, abnormal, maybe, happy, eh. So my answer here is C, abnormal. 
Throughout the course of the song, it is clear that the other students would rather A, room with Elphaba, B, room with Galinda, C, remain indifferent to the situation or not care, D, peacefully sort through the conflict. So if we look back at the text evidence for this one, it's clear that they would rather room with Galinda. At one point they say, dear Galinda, you are just too good. How do you stand it? I don't think I could. She's a terror. She's a martyr. We don't need to show a bias. And so that whole part is saying, we would really be with you. And I think at one point they say, we're all on your side. We share your loathing. And so Alphaba is clearly the outcast here. She's the one that everybody else doesn't want to be with. Uh, which of the following choices shows a verb in a future tense? Of course, I'll care for Nessa. There's a strange exhilaration forced to reside. My face is flushing. So think about which of these would happen in the future. A, of course, I'll care for Nessa. I'll is a contraction. See, we're going to still do it at home. Um, it's a contraction of I and will, and will is a future tense. It's going to happen eventually. Six. Why does the author of the song make a point of including details like my pulse is rushing, my head is reeling, my face is flushing about how they are physically reacting to their emotions? Is it A, to convince the audience of the dangers of prolonged hatred? B, to give specific details about why they hate one another? So let's kind of tackle those two first. So to convince the audience of the dangers of prolonged hatred, probably not. As unpleasant as these things are, they're not really a danger, right? B, to give specific details about why they hate one another. So the song does give some details about why they hate each other, but but the main thing is that these are not the reasons that they're hating each other, right? It's not because their pulse is rushing that they hate each other. Their pulse is rushing um, because they already hate each other. C, to make the image more clear to the audience that these two girls really do not like each other, that's a good answer, right? This is an example of their symptoms that they're feeling. D, to make the song longer for the length of the play, Always never fall for that trap. They never are including something to make something longer. Number seven, using the graphic organizer below, compare and contrast Alphaba and Galinda, writing things that are unique to them and things that they share in common. So if you're watching the video, Alphaba is the one in green. Galinda is the one who is pale. And it's pretty clear what their similarities and differences are. But I do want you to practice your graphic organizer skills, filling that in for yourself. All right, so moving on to Out of My Mind, let's review the chapter answers from yesterday. Chapter 30. At the beginning of the chapter, Melody says, what happened today is all my fault. I should have listened. We should have stayed home and spent the day together, but we didn't because of me. Is it true? Why does Melody say this? Melody insisted on going to school, and this caused Penny to get hit by a car. So it's obviously not Melody's fault, even though she feels guilty. How does Melody try to warn the family what happened? She kicks and wiggles and throws a tantrum when she realizes Penny is about to get hit by the car. Melody tries to stop her, but she doesn't understand. Um, chapter 31. Why does Melody feel so guilty? She feels guilty because she's the one who insisted on going to school and she was unable to stop the car. Obviously, we know that this is not Melody's fault. She did her best, but it's just kind of a further frustration in Melody's life. How does Mrs. B respond to Melody's wish to be, quote, like the other kids or, quote, normal? She says that being normal like Claire isn't that great, especially if you're going to be mean like she is. And one thing I will share is my dad had these two rules of life. And the first one isn't so positive. The second one is. Um, his first rule of life was people are stupid. Expect them to do stupid things. And so that's just kind of a defensive way of being like, always thinking about what other people think. But his second rule of life that he repeated very often in my childhood was everyone is weird. And that is because in case you haven't realized already, after being in a classroom with me for a whole year, I am not an ordinary person. You know, I don't learn in an ordinary way. Um, I don't do things in an ordinary way. And that's okay. That's who I am. And I always used to go around and tell my dad, I'm so weird. I'm so weird. I'm so weird. And he would just say, everybody's weird. And the longer I've gone through life and the more things I've experienced, the more I've seen that as true. Everyone is weird. We just need to embrace each other's weirdness. And so if you see someone who's different than you in middle school, especially, um, just know that they're weird just like you're weird. There are things about each and every one of us that are unusual and unique to ourselves, and we should celebrate them as opposed to hate on ourselves for those differences. 
for our work for today, chapter 22. What are Melody's first concerns when asking about her sister? What does she think about Penny needing to be in a wheelchair? How does Melody return to school? And chapter 33. The chapter starts with fifth grade is probably pretty rocky for a lot of kids. Homework, never being quite sure if you're cool enough, clothes, parents, wanting to play with toys, and wanting to be grown up all at the same time under our motor. How are Melody's struggles similar to that of the other fifth graders? Um... And that is it for today. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you on Monday.